So many questions to get to the bottom of. John has been trying to do that um, in Westminster all morning. Morning again. Hi, Louise. Good morning, everybody from Westminster, where, yeah, our papers are very soggy this morning. We've had a lot of rain. Uh, it seems to have dried up a little bit now. But, yeah, this, this place has kind of sprung back to life all of a sudden. Uh, Parliament was prorogued or so we thought, uh, and then the judges said yesterday that that proroguing was unlawful. It, it kind of never happened. MPs are therefore coming back. So a momentous day yesterday. We've never seen anything like it before. An amazing story for political reporters to cover, and we have two of them here to try and make sense of it with us now. Uh, Sonia Soda writes for The Observer, and Tom Harwood is a reporter for the political website Guido Fawkes. Morning to both of you. Good morning. So, I mean... <sighs> Where are we right now, Sonia? Where, where, you know, what is happening? Well, there's a huge amount of uncertainty, I think, what happens next. We're going to see Parliament come back today. The Speaker has said that Parliament will sit at 11.30. I think you're going to see opposition parties table um, urgent questions to the government. We're certainly going to be hearing from Michael Gove. I think we probably will actually hear from Boris Johnson as well. He got on a plane uh, back from New York at four o'clock this morning. But the really big question, I think, on everyone's minds is, are the opposition parties going to table a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson this week or are they going to wait until after mid-October when Boris Johnson will have had to have gone to the European Union to ask for an extension it's another law that opposition MPs have passed um, if he hasn't got a deal and uh, all the signals this morning are that Labour for example are saying they, they don't want a general election now because it might risk a no-deal Brexit on the 31st of October and the country just isn't ready for it so we have to wait we have to get that extension as soon as we've got that extension Labour will want to see a general election. Tom is, is that your reading of it as well I mean do you agree that that's kind of where we are think, regardless of your politics? I think that's generally right I don't think we're going to see a vote of no confidence immediately in fact we're probably not going to see one until late October when Parliament wouldn't have been prorogued anyway so what a lot of people are asking now is what is this for this extra few days now that Parliament has secured through very expensive uh, legal uh, tribunals how how is this actually going to help what are they going to do now that they haven't done for the last three years and I think what Brexiteers are really thinking now is all that's going to happen is that the opposition parties are going to try and embarrass the government might ask a few questions but in reality aren't going to do very much with it. I don't think that's true at all actually. First of all opposition MPs are a bit worried that this law that they've passed mandating Boris Johnson to go and ask for an extension might not be completely watertight so I think in the next couple of weeks you're going to see MPs try and tighten that up. They thought it was very important they should do that. That's one of the reasons why um, this case went to the Supreme Court. But quite aside from that there's something really there's a really important principle at stake here. What we've seen is a, a, a Prime Minister lost his majority, crashed down to minus 42, no mandate from the country, trying to do something that Parliament didn't want him to do, and he just shut it down for five weeks. That's an incredibly dangerous precedent. So it was really important on a point of principle this went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court has said a Prime Minister can't do that. His authority to govern comes from Garland, Parliament. Tom, you know, he... do, do you think that denting of Boris Johnson's authority undoubtedly yesterday with the, the judgment of the Supreme Court. Do you think it makes it less likely that he'll try be able to try to play legal games and try to find loopholes when it comes to extending or not extending Brexit? He's going to try and do everything within his power, humanly possible, to not send that letter. He said he'd rather die in a ditch than send a letter asking for another pointless, expensive delay to this process. And actually, I think what's quite interesting about this is that his standing within the country is probably rising as it's falling within Westminster. This judgment from a lot of judges that people can't name and haven't really heard of before is going to play even more into that narrative coming from number 10 that this is politicians against the people this but is what, Boris if, versus if, the if world. he can't deliver brexit on the 31st of october though that standing in the polls might take a kicking mightn't it that is the danger for boris johnson that well, nigel farage is breathing down his neck and then all of a sudden boris johnson is the prime minister who failed to deliver brexit well it might but i don't think he would be the prime minister at that point we've heard how much he wants a general election he's asked Parliament to vote for it two times and Parliament has refused to vote for that election which is quite ironic considering they're saying that they're more representative of the people than the government is but ultimately I don't think Boris Johnson will ever send that letter he will never be the Prime Minister to delay Brexit he'd rather resign. So, so you're just talking to opposition parties here today how much planning and coordination 
is going on. I mean, in a way, they've got this victory at the Supreme Court, but yeah. you don't get the sense that they really know what to do with the time they've now been given. I mean, I think there are some clear ideas about what the time could be used for. The question will be, there's going to need to be a lot of behind-the-scenes coordination, negotiations. For example, if you're going to bring a motion of, of, of a vote of no confidence, you need to be absolutely clear that there is a temporary prime minister that all the opposition parties will uh, coalesce behind. So you're going to see lots of those sorts of talks happening over the next two or three days. I think it's absolutely right at this critical time. I mean, the country is in a political crisis. We could be looking at crashing out disastrously on the 31st of October. Oh, apologies. Um, we just obviously lost the line there um, to Westminster, but I think um, John was just about to wrap up that um, interview anyway. Um, so there you go. And we'll have more, of course, um, rest of this programme and throughout the day on the BBC as well.